last year's hurricanes was in the news even months after it made landfall. In April, forecasters upgraded Hurricane Michael from a Category 4 to a Category 5 hurricane. Now, predicting the intensity of storms remains a challenge for forecasters. We talked to two experts about some of the reasons why. Hurricane forecasts have been much more accurate lately. The forecast track has seen remarkable progress in pinpointing where the landfall will occur over the last 10 years, thanks to new high-definition satellites, updated Hurricane Hunter reconnaissance flights, drones, better computer model guidance, and research. However, there is one part of the forecast that's still very difficult to predict, the forecast intensity. Compared to forecasting track, which is really determined by sort of what's going on in the large-scale atmosphere, intensity is determined by things going on inside the core of the storm. According to Dr. Michael Brennan, branch chief of the Hurricane Specialist Unit at the National Hurricane Center, intensity is determined by how strong the eyeball is and how the storm is interacting with the water. He said we are still struggling with the forecast intensity of the storm, but we've made some progress in improving the forecasts. Overall, our average intensity forecast errors have come down, but we still struggle with these rapidly intensifying storms like Hurricane Michael last year. Hurricane Michael is a perfect example of how the intensity forecast was very challenging to forecasters. It was in a situation where they didn't expect a lot of rapid intensification, but the storm had other plans that forecasters couldn't necessarily see. Michael sort of looked like it was in an environment where there was a lot of strong upper level winds, but they, they never really got in, inside and impacted the core of the storm. So it was able to take advantage of the warm waters and the, sort of the, uh, the strong winds blowing air out of the top of the storm allowed it to rapidly intensify almost its entire life cycle right up to what made it landfall. One of the best tools forecasters have to help with identifying features like those strong winds is the GO-16 satellite. GO-16 has been a real nice advancement because we get higher resolution imagery, we get pictures more often, so you can see structural changes and you can track the center of the storm, especially for weaker systems that where the center is difficult to find, you're trying to see if the system is even formed yet. Access to new satellite data every minute has already allowed forecasters to change the prediction of how strong a storm may become. This very important update can quickly get out to the public so they are aware of new dangers like a higher storm surge level and greater rain totals. Dr. Brennan says forecasts will come a long way in to continue to analyze past storm data to see if they can find features that may lead to when a storm may rapidly intensify. And one day they hope to have intensity forecasts be as accurate as the track forecasts. Michael's impact is still being felt along the Florida panhandle where it struck back in October of 2018. We we're the only local TV crew there to cover landfall last year and we returned in May to check on the recovery. It's been hard to see all the destruction and uh, know that um, you know it's a long road ahead. These days, life in the Panhandle. You just gotta have a strong faith and and you know uh, hope for the best, and uh, we'll survive and get through it. Is no day at the beach. Sad to see the rubble and the wrecks, and we but we know it'll be back. And I just hope it doesn't take too long. But Linda Smith does enjoy walking the beach with her grandchildren to take her mind off rebuilding her shattered life. The hardest part for me is weather. I watch it frantically every day. And uh, I'm not sure whether I should, whether it's good for me or not. Um, like I say, that storm last week just really freaked me out. But I think that's natural and, I, and the more I um, stay and weather those things, I will weather the weather, as they say. <laughs> Very English phrase. <laughs> it's cleaning up. I mean, it still looks... Yeah, crappy. <laughs> this is crappy. Who's got to make it home? Chris Prather is trying to make a home for he and his son, but the road back from a Category 5 hurricane is not an easy one. And it's not our fault. My insurance paid off. I have the money to rebuild. I just can't find the contractor. That's reasonable. People here know life may not get back to normal for a while and hope this is not the new normal. I guess everybody's feeling very similar. You know, very jittery inside. We're coming up for hurricane season again. But you've got to battle on, haven't you? 
This is Tyndall Air Force Base, and back on October 10, 2018, is exactly where Hurricane Michael made landfall, having recently upgraded to a Category 5 storm. In that direction is Panama City Beach. In that direction is Mexico Beach, putting the eye wall, the strongest winds of the storm, directly over those populated areas. In Mexico Beach... We have no gas stations. We have no grocery stores. We have sewage here and water, but they don't have it on the west end of the beach. And in Panama City... We have lots of empty buildings and lots of demolished buildings, but none of the neighborhoods appear to have been completely abandoned. And that's a, a promising sign. We've had a lot of good community support. Somebody from the New York Fire Department came by and brought me this big box of uh, supplies and stuff. And so it's just it was amazing how uh, people would just come from all over. Of course, that, that's all gone now. and. You know, we're just, uh, we just hope we're not forgotten. During hurricane season, you may hear us using unfamiliar terms during our forecasts. That's right, words like invest, cyclone, and depression. So what do they mean? We'll take a look next. And later, remembering Hurricane Camille's landfall 50 years ago this summer.